Welcome, Kim, to InfraTalk America. Thank you. So nice to have you here, and uh, we are uh, we're we're both involved in uh, the American uh, the uh, American Association of uh, State and Highway Transportation Officials, AASHTO as we know it. Yes. Uh, the collection of all the state DOTs, and uh, you're here in your professional capacity. Yes. Uh, for your company called Viva. That's right. And. Um, um, but you also have the, the, the distinction of having served on your uh, city council in Salem, Missouri, and, and, and part of that uh, uh, service included being mayor. That is correct. Uh, so you're a local official who have, I'm sure, has had some experience dealing with state D, the state DOT and, and yeah. uh, all the associated uh, uh, benefits that can come with that. Yeah. Um, so I might ask you about your experience working with the state DOT as a municipal official. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll go a little bit farther back from that. I, I originally got my, my start in my career working for a small but mighty nonprofit that worked a lot on um, making a, a healthier community overall. So increasing walkability, bikeability, um, you know, transportation equity. Uh, and that's how I first began uh, working closely with local government, uh, regional organizations, and even state organizations. Uh, and it gave me the, the passion for government in general. Um, and then so from that, um, obviously we worked hand in hand uh, at that position. And then from that, I, I ran for office myself because I wanted to get more done. Um, so, so yeah, I became uh, an elected official in 2016, uh, started as, uh, as an older woman. Uh, in the six years that I served, uh, I was everything from older woman, uh, president of the board, chair of the capital improvements committee, chair of the finance committee. Uh, and then I ended that, that time as, as mayor. Um, but yeah, so obviously in, in local government, you, you never get anything done alone. Um, oh, you're, of course. you're working with, um, you know, your, your regional planning commissions, uh, your state DOT, um, tons of, tons of cogs in the wheel, uh, if, if you will. So, um, yeah. And, and MoDOT's a great, uh, uh, state DOT. So yeah. you're fortunate to have the resource of that agency available to you. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I, I wanted to sort of start with that background because I, I, I've always considered, I spent 12 years as a member of the Maine House of Representatives. Yeah. So I served in wow. the legislature and then I served in the governor's office and then ultimately at the federal level. Um, but I was also deputy commissioner of Maine DOT at, okay. at the time. And uh, so, but I've always considered uh, uh, local government the front lines of public yeah. policy. You are literally exposed to your friends and neighbors at the grocery store every day yeah. and you're seeing them and they all have opinions on local issues. That's the truth. <laughs> um, when I was in the legislature, I mean, half the time somebody says, how are things in Washington? You know, yeah. uh, you know, so the, 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 it's a different kind of relationship when Absolutely. you're serving at the state level than the local level. So I've always had a lot of admiration for those of you willing to, to serve yeah. at that level. But let's talk about what we're here. We're here about transportation and infrastructure and all this good stuff. Uh, and uh, you represent a company called Viva. Can you tell us about the company and your technology? Yeah, absolutely. So so Viva, uh, we have AI computer vision sensors um, and our mission is genuinely to save lives um, and also to encourage active travel and uh, different modes of transportation. So uh, our, our sensors do a lot of things, uh, but one of the most exciting things that they do is they detect near misses or all of the almost crashes that are occurring on our roadways. Uh, and we do that because we don't believe that anybody should have to lose a life or be injured before we can advocate for the changes that need to be made on our roadways. Uh, and currently, unfortunately, our authorities are in that reactive state. They, they're dependent on historic crash reports and police reports to be able to uh, build the case for change uh, for these safety improvements that need to be made. So we want to supply the data that gives them the power to say, this is a dangerous situation here. Uh, this is what's happening. This, this is the root cause for these safety concerns. Uh, and we need to act now to prevent crashes from occurring and prevent lives from being lost or severely injured. Um, along with that, that same sensor collects a lot of the traditional traffic data that uh, they're looking to collect. Things like classified counts from everything from e-scooters, pedestrians, cyclists to your motor vehicles. Um, turning counts, speed, congestion data, tracks data. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge suite of, of data and it's all real time, um, plug and play. Uh, we have an online dashboard. You can view all of that data uh, essentially in real time. So. 
so yeah, it's a it's. So so how does the uh, how does the technology work? Uh, where are the sensors uh, located, for example, in the infrastructure, in the vehicles, both? How does yeah, that work? so they are they're generally we we just need height and power. Those are our okay. two requirements. So uh, generally, most commonly, I would say they're they're installed on a light pole or a traffic signal pole uh, because those have the main components of height and power. Uh, we also have solar and battery options available if needed as well. Um, but you know they're they're in such a variety of locations, um, you know, from busy intersections in downtown urban areas to small towns to parks and trail systems. So they're not connected, they're not integrated at all with the, uh, the, the traffic signal nope. technology. They do not. So it stands on its own. Correct. So it doesn't need to be. Uh, we can also do detection for signals, um, but uh, yeah, that's not a requirement. So there's a SIM card within the device itself. Uh, and so that that cellular uh, connection is what moves all the data from, from the device itself onto the online uh, dashboard that you can view it all. So the technology uh, doesn't depend on uh, your companion technology being in the vehicle. You're that's correct. recording the data from visualization exactly. of the traffic movement. And, exactly. And yeah. AI computer vision. So uh, our algorithm is trained to identify um, all the different classes that I just talked about uh, and continually training that algorithm to identify more. So things like wheelchair users, white cane users, uh, strollers, cargo bikes, all of these different modes. Yeah, we're continually training our, our algorithm. And as those continue to be released, our users have the benefit of, we just get to tick that on uh, from our end and they're automatically able to start collecting that data as new features are released. So uh, yeah, AI computer vision is such a, a powerful uh, tool and, and, and way to collect this data for those reasons. So uh, tell us a little bit about Viva. How long has Viva been around? Yeah, Viva's been around since 2016. So uh, it was founded by three friends who met at the University of Cambridge. Uh, some of the brightest minds I've ever uh, had the privilege to meet and speak to. Um, they are uh, avid cyclists and uh, they, they noticed that there was this huge gap in reliable data, especially for vulnerable road users. You know, we have a lot of data on cars, right? Um, but but finding reliable data on how many cyclists are on the road or pedestrians are on the road, that isn't just a two-day tr traffic study that gives you a tiny snippet right. of, of, of information. Uh, it was just, it was so difficult to find. So they really set out to, to solve that problem. And that's how they, they identified AI computer vision as, as the means for, for that change. Um, we're based in London. That's where our headquarters are. Uh, we have a very, very healthy, healthy uh, customer base there. Um, we have we are the market leader uh, there, uh, also in Australia, several other places in Europe, uh, and then we started our our North American expansion this year, really. So we have. Uh, oh, so yeah. you're very new to this market. This this market, yes. Yeah. Um, so we're excited to be here, um, and yeah, we are. We we originally piloted in New York City. That was our first customer, so it's great for first customer to have. Um, Not bad. Yeah, and then also Toronto, and then uh, just. Uh, you know, also working with Culver City right right outside of LA as well. Oh, that's that's great. Yeah. Um, you know, a big focus of ours is digital project delivery, and we focus on uh, how to build stuff uh, for the most part. But um, we have absolutely expressed it. We we've adopted uh, work zone safety as a as a policy yeah. issue that we advance. But uh, absolutely, the the technology that will improve how we manage traffic, how yeah. we, you know, it, it really becomes a question of. Uh, uh, I remember way back um, when when I when I served at Federal Highway, um, and we had established a program called Everyday Counts, which mm -hmm. goes on to this day. I'm yeah. so proud of it. And um, we had a uh, an initiative in round one, which would go back to 2010 called mm -hmm. adaptive signal control technology yeah and what it was it was uh, actually research federal highway had done and a couple of other private companies had done similar kind of research but they were basically it was all about plug and play yeah it was all about how do we easily adapt existing traffic signals to provide um, a, a better means of managing the technology and the signalization to extend the life of an intersection. Right. Because obviously rebuilding intersections is a very expensive proposition. Right. So it was really a, a, a way to, com to improve safety, to improve uh, you know, um, um, mobility, uh, traffic movement. 
um, and uh, do so at a fraction of the cost yeah. of, of physical infrastructure improvements. Um, that was 2010. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what you're describing is uh, um, uh, not the same, obviously, application, but um, AI is oh, changing it's the future. everything. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, and, and exactly what you just said. Everything that we do in transportation, it's an expen It's expensive. It's expensive to change a roadway. It's expensive to make these improvements. And one of the my favorite ways that our customers use our sensors is by they're able to monitor how effective the changes that they're making are. So they can start with the low cost solutions first and have that real time view of what impact did this have. So a lot of times they find they don't have to jump to that high cost solution. We can just paint bolder lines on the road. We can put new signage here. And, and that gets us to the point that we are, we're satisfied. Um, so, it, so it's really a way to be able to, like I said, in real time monitor that, not having to you know, implement something and then wait months for a report to come back on if it was effective or not. We, you can look every single day. As long as you've had that sensor up, you can you can look at the data. So if you've had that sensor up for three years and you wanna, you wanna look back on three years worth of data, you can do that. Or if you wanna look at just what's happened today, you can do that. There's flexibility. Uh, fascinating. Thank you. Uh, you yeah. know, uh, artificial intelligence, I was saying something, uh, telling somebody earlier, um, I, I, I mean, I'm not sure I remember hearing the term. Yeah. Three years ago. Yeah. Or two yeah, years ago. Totally. Um, and the pace at which it's it's it, it's adapting to every or or people are adapting it their yeah. their needs to to AI in some way shape or form is really a little scary at times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the application you're describing seems to make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, because you want that technology studying, learning, and right. adapting to what. It's on the ground. It'll help the interpretation of that information be much more effective. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and that's the exciting thing about AI as well is the longer you have it implemented, the longer it's around, the better it gets. Um, so the, the the more that that algorithm has a chance to change uh, to train, uh, the more accurate it gets. Which. Uh, you know, across our classes, we have 97% accuracy or above. So we, we already have high accuracy, but the, the more images uh, and video that, that, our, that our system sees, the uh, more it's trained and it just gets better with time. So. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, I, I really appreciate you taking anything else you'd like to add I, and, or, I, and let our listeners you know, know about your technology or, or Salem, Missouri, for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, Salem's a, a small town. And uh, so a lot of times when I'm talking about Viva and the projects that we do, I, you know, we talk about the New York City, uh, the New York City projects or the London projects, these these big cities, which are exciting uh, and always, you know, I'm excited to talk about them, but I always like to mention too that um, we we work with the Salem's and the small towns too. This is this technology; uh, it's it's not uh, it's not exclusive to big cities. Uh, we you know in some ways it might be more important. Exactly, coming, coming by capital dollars is even tougher for those. Exactly, towns. and as you know, SS four A uh, funding is released. Uh, data is such a is, is such a core piece to being able to write a compelling application, um, but also you know in the Salem. Missouri's, um, you might not have the crash data to to support change. You you might have your your uh, citizens coming to you every right. day saying this intersection is really dangerous. I almost get in a crash every day when I take my kids to school. Um, but having this kind of data can help you advocate for those changes that need to be made without having to wait for for something terrible to happen. Um, and like I said, we make this really accessible for all sizes of communities. So don't think that because it's AI, computer vision, it sounds really fancy, techy, uh, that it's not gonna be accessible for your community because um, we really strive to, to make sure that we're accessible for everybody. Well, you're a great advocate for your technology. Thank you, Thank you for being so knowledgeable about it and sharing those insights with us. And uh, um, and good luck. With Thank your you endeavors. so much. Thank you. Thank great you, to Kim. talk to you. Much appreciated.